Well, where is the food crisis headed next? That's the subject of our roundtable. Joining me now from Washington, Kimberly Elliott. She's a senior fellow at the Center for Global Development. And in Omaha, Nebraska, we have Bill Lapp. He is president at Advanced Economic Solutions. Welcome to you both. Thanks for coming on Bottom Line today. Thank you, my pleasure. Good afternoon. Uh, Ms. Elliott, let me start with you. Our Alan Bayerga was just on the phone with me from Nairobi, and he talked about issues of finance. Talk to us mm -hmm. about the role that that plays in this food insecurity crisis we're seeing around the world. Well, you have both short-run and long-run elements to the food security crisis, and I think most of what Alan was talking about, except for the World Food Program, were the long-run investments that we need to do to ensure that we have sort of enough food going forward with growing populations, growing incomes, growing demand. Um, in the short run, what you have is with higher prices, sharply higher prices and rapidly rising prices, is poor people who are not themselves farmers, aren't growing for their own subsistence and their own use, suddenly find that they can't afford food. And so there, one of the key things um, to look at that governments often reach for, for programs to try and lower prices through generalized subsidies or by restricting exports. And those things are very, very costly and inefficient. They raise, right. they lower the cost for everyone, but they don't aren't targeted at the poor. So one thing is to look for using targeted cash transfers yeah. so you increase the income of the poor so they can afford the food that is now at a higher price. The Mr. Lapp, are, are, are nations around the world doing enough to, as Ms. Elliott uh, said, to, to try to target the poor, to try to help people who are in a circumstance where they just are not getting enough <coughs> nutritious food to eat? Well, I, I think uh, the countries around the world, especially the developing countries, realize that their um, political survival is oftentimes at stake. So uh, when, when you have an increase in price, you, you do uh, um, take action, such as limiting exports. If you're an exporter of wheat, for example, such as India did in 2007 and 8, and as Russia did in the past year, you're, 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 you have a vested interest in, in trying to uh, uh, make sure that uh, food prices are kept in check and that uh, you have enough um, uh, food for, for the people so there isn't uh, uh, social unrest. Right. But M Mr. Lapp, we are seeing with these rising commodities prices, though, they are going to be passed down to the consumer, no doubt, correct? Absolutely. We, we've seen, uh, especially in the last six months, nine months, uh, a dramatic surge in, in commodity prices for some reasons I can go into. But the, the result is the United Nations uh, food index is up 25% on a year-over-year -year basis. Uh, we've reached record levels. Um, we, we've already seen in a few instances um, uh, some, some food riots. And uh, we're, we're seeing this have an Greater and a greater impact on um, uh, developing economies, especially where uh, the proportion of food that their uh, their income that they're spending on food uh, runs anywhere from often 30 to 50 percent. Uh, Ms. Elliott, we've talked about some of the consequences of these rising prices, as uh, Mr. Lapp just mentioned, some uh, social unrest in places around the globe. But can you point to any successes that we're seeing? Um, I don't know that we, uh, well, there's one success that's not necessarily the result of policy or it's actually the result of not doing bad things like restricting exports, and that's in the rice market, where the last time around, one of the, the hardest things for consumers was a very sharp increases in the price of rice, which were mainly due to sort of panic and, and countries on the one hand restricting exports, uh, on the other hand Philippines doing some panic buying, and even individual consumers hoarding rice. Um, and that drove the price up more than three or fourfold. Um, so, so far, one of the bright spots in the current crisis is that the rice market hasn't gone nuts. Um, and that's a major staple grain for billions of people in, in both South Asia and East Asia. So that's, again, it's more due to the absence of bad policies as opposed to good policies, mm. but it's, it is one bright spot in the current crisis so far. Uh, Mr. Lapp uh, and Ms. Elliott, I'll ask you both in our last minute. Mr. Lapp, I'll start with you. Uh, as we go forward, and unfortunately, we are going to see that explosion in population by 2050, uh, it is incumbent, Mr. Lapp, on countries around the world to do what to help feed their populations? Well, uh, Allowing free trade and allowing uh, the market incentives to work so that uh, farmers there uh, can, can prosper, um, supporting them with, with infrastructure that brings food um, from the fields to the consumers, obviously, is, is one area. Um, I think in the U.S., um, 
uh, our biofuel policies have probably worked against us because it's absorbing so many acres for the production of uh, fuel. So there's plenty we can do uh, aside from um, applying uh, ever-growing uh, technologies to improve yields. And Ms. Elliott, I'll let you get the last word again, pose the same question, incumbent on countries around the world to do what to feed their people? Well, I would agree with everything that Bill just said, and the only thing I would add to that is I think, with, especially with climate change, we're going to see more of these extreme weather events, more volatility. And so I would go back to the idea of governments needing to ensure that they have safety nets in place. Cash transfers are, are growing in many countries for many kinds of things, including for uh, conditioned on education, for example. So I think putting those kind of mechanisms in place to deal with the volatility we're likely to see is another element of the package that Bill so nicely laid out. And Kimberly Elliott of the Center for Global Development joining us from Washington. Bill Lapp of Advanced Economic Solutions from Omaha, Nebraska. Thank you both so much. We appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you.